Well, happy Sunday to you and welcome to our weekly look at the real story behind the big stories. I'm Richard Ransom. Thanks for joining us. Before we meet my panel, let's show you our topics for the next 30 minutes. First, we have to talk about the Memphis mayor's race, right? From efforts by some to consolidate the field of candidates to efforts by others to keep the field from consolidating, we'll break it all down. A couple of noteworthy people doing an about face this week. The interim superintendent of Memphis Shelby County Schools decides she wants the job permanently after all, and after pleading guilty to violating federal campaign finance laws, a state senator says he wants to change his plea after all. And finally, the battle between the Shelby County Mayor and the Shelby County Clerk takes another ugly turn in Harris versus Halbert, we're calling it. <laughs> we'll get to all that in a moment, but first let me introduce my panel. To my immediate right is ABC 24 weeknight anchor Pepper Baker in her debut performance yeah, well, here on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Glad to have you here. And Otis Sanford, of course, ABC 24 uh, political analyst. Got to talk about the mayor's race first, you guys, because yeah. this one seems to take more twists and turns considering the actual voting isn't until October. We're sure doing a lot of talking about it, and now the lawyers are doing a lot of talking about it. Uh, let's first talk about the efforts by Reverend Earl Fisher, uh, who wants to launch another people's campaign, plans to, and I guess this weekend will be the first of these meet and greet sessions they're going to have as they try to consolidate the field because their belief is there's way too many candidates, specifically African American candidates, uh, running for Memphis mayor right now and he'd like to winnow that down, have some meet and greets with these candidates and maybe they can get behind somebody. Otis, they've tried this before, yeah. uh, one time with great success, right. uh, <laughs> way back when when Willie Harrington won, right. uh, but it's interesting to me that of the two, of all the candidates that have been invited to take part in these meet and greets, it's Willie Harrington and the other considered front runner here, uh, Floyd Bonner, who has not even expressed any interest in attending. Well, that's true, and uh, they have to explain their own reasons for it. I'm sure I know why uh, former Mayor Harrington doesn't want to do it. He just doesn't want to be tied to anything like that anymore. He's done that before. Uh, there are several groups here, Richard, and I've talked to a lot of people, including uh, Pastor Fisher, uh, about this issue. Uh, and their effort is really tied around um, coming up with the most important issues in this race and then getting the respective candidates to address those issues. They feel that that is the way uh, to whittle down the number of candidates and come up with somebody that they can support. So they're putting the issues before the candidates. Um, and uh, other people want to do that as well. I frankly see the discussion about this right now as a good thing because the overall goal here, and, and I agree with this, is to create some awareness and eliminate the apathy in city elections. And the more you talk about it, the more we explain how important this election is. And I've talked about that before on the show, that this is the, one of the most significant elections since 1991, and probably going back even 20 or 30 years before that. Uh, so the discussion about it is a good thing, how they're going about it with the uh, People's Convention and then other people trying to do the same thing is not a bad thing if they deal with issues first and then deal with candidates. Interesting perspective. So, you know, I have to ask you, Pepper, since you're relatively new here and you've covered elections in a number of places, oh, yes. what have been your observations about this race, specifically the mayor's race, uh, as it starts to get going here? I mean, when you talk about so many African-American candidates, it does first strike me as a little bit of a concern because I know the African-American population across the country has had problems with going out and voting or voter suppression or a lot of impacts that have always come to that population. So when you have so many candidates running, uh, my concern would just be uh, trying to get really one that could take in all those votes and actually have a chance at winning the whole race. Other than, other than that, you know, you could see these votes spread across um, these candidates. So I, I think it's probably the most abnormal race that I've seen. I know in the past just there's, wait. Oh, it's gonna <laughs> there's been other races where a lot of candidates go for uh, mayor and I just, I just think again the votes are going to be split in a way that's somebody that's going to win that we didn't see coming. <laughs> uh, Pastor Fisher believes, and he's not alone in this, that yeah. it sure would be nice if we had at least a runoff where the top two candidates would have to uh, square off if nobody got above the 50 percent, which a lot of states and cities already do. Right. Uh, and that would at least keep someone from winning the mayor's race, potentially with maybe 22, 23 percent of the vote, which has happened before, Otis. Right. Oh, yeah. And uh, of course, we've had runoffs in the past, Richard. We did runoffs for many, many years. It was only until 1991 uh, when a federal judge uh, said that runoffs 
um, were unconstitutional because they uh, served to discriminate against the African American population. That was 1991, though. Today, Memphis is 65% African American. It is in the 30%, maybe mid 30% white population here. So the numbers have flipped here. And so now there is uh, an interest in a runoff, and I've talked to uh, Pastor Fisher about that too. Uh, but that's a federal decision here that they would have to change uh, by going back to federal court and getting, mm -hmm. that judge is no longer with us, um, but uh, they would have to go back to federal court to get that change. Okay, so a lot of hurdles. So yeah. let's move on to the other topic, and I, I, I said when, when this story broke uh, the past week, grab your popcorn because here's, <laughs> here comes another <laughs> Memphis mayor's contest, and that's this issue over residency. Yeah. Uh, some of the best known candidates, three of them, have residency issues. Uh, enough so that there's been a ruling by the Shelby County Election Commission that uh, legal opinion that they plan to abide by that follows the city charter which states if you have not lived in the city for five years prior to the election date then you don't get to run as a candidate and uh, Obviously, uh, two of the candidates, Van Turner and Floyd Bonner, who have recently moved here uh, back to Memphis from Southeast Shelby County and Bartlett, respectively, uh, say, no, uh, you know, we're going to challenge that, and we think we should have a right to be on the ballot. Um, first of all, Pepper, I'll start with you, your observations on this whole issue, because it would seem to me that it's fair for residents to expect that their mayor would have lived in the city recently? I don't know. Of course. I mean, uh, five years, I feel, is a little steep. I do feel like you can get a sense for taxpayer money and what all the money's being spent to uh, within a two-year. Um, but, you know, I think, again, with so many candidates on the ballot, uh, there, there have to be certain requirements in order to slim it down a little bit and, and to make sure that the people that are running have, um, you know, carried weight in the, in the places they're trying to represent. As we were talking before the show, so City Council has talked about making at least a one-year requirement, which yeah. probably wouldn't affect this uh, campaign. How do you see this ending up, Otis? I mean, is this just going to get bogged down the courts and we'll have the same candidates running, or will there be some candidates who won't be able to run? I have no idea, and I covered the courts for many years, including Chancery Court, where this is going to be. Um, my sense right now is that um, whoever judge is going to handle this case, and there are two different cases right now, one filed by Floyd Bonner, one filed by Van Turner. Two different courtrooms. And I think they're in two different courtrooms mm -hmm. now. Whether that gets consolidated, I don't know. My sense right now is that um, whatever decision is made is going to be appealed. And if it's appealed and there is no expedited request to decide this, this could be pushed beyond um, the filing deadline. Uh, and I don't know what happens there. I don't know if if the election commission's decision will carry the day, or if there is some kind of temporary restraining order put on this to keep the status quo, whatever that status quo is, uh, and, and maybe have this apply in the next election. I don't know. I mean, this is, this is the murkiest thing. And again, I've covered a lot of murkiness in this, in this <laughs> city over the last several decades. This is one that is really murky. I have no idea how it would turn out. Well, speaking of murky, one of the uh, <laughs> things that's hanging out there as well, uh, waiting in the wings, so to speak, is Reverend Keith Norman. Yeah. Uh, very well known in this community, uh, apparently getting a lot of interest. Uh, Deidre Malone, who's a political consultant and frequent guest on this show, says she's hearing this name a lot more uh, recently as someone who is really eyeing the race. And I did have one consultant tell me that, um, you know, there's no one who, in, in this person's opinion, uh, really is capturing the, uh, having a vision for this city, looking toward the future, mm -hmm. uh, really articulating what they want Memphis to be, despite us having a field of 12 candidates right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll get your sense, first of all, do you agree with that observation, that is there a candidate that you think has really got that, you know, the charisma, I don't know what we're expecting, and it's kind of this undefined thing, but uh, that that's a frequent criticism we hear, given how important this election is, as, Mep as Otis was saying. Well, I feel like you're asking me to give an endorsement well, already. I <laughs> No, no <laughs> um, I, I will say I, there's a lot that know so much of the past and when we talk about residency requirements too I mean just because you don't live somewhere doesn't mean that you haven't had a hand all over that um, city and, and you know I think Van Turner had mentioned how he's been extremely uh, just engaged in so many different hands and so many different parts of Memphis with, as NAACP president as being an attorney um, but 
Yeah, I just feel a little, I haven't seen one, I guess, in the attention I've paid that has moved it forward. There's a lot of what we know from the past, and of course, Sheriff Bonner can probably speak to that a lot, but um, I'm not seeing the most innovative approaches, I would say. And maybe it's too soon for that. I don't want to be too harsh on these candidates, but well, it just, what's, where's your plan? What are you going to do for our city? We're not really hearing a lot of that. It's not too soon. I mean, you know, elections are like this marathon. Uh, and we need to start talking about it now. Again, we need to raise the awareness. Well, the candidates need to raise the awareness with what they are talking about, the position papers that they have. Um, Van Turner let it be known more than two years ago, probably right after the last election, that he was interested in running for mayor. So he got a real head start. But the fact that he got this head start didn't scare off anybody else. Uh, and a lot of that is because the other candidates feel that, well, there's nobody that's really distinguishing them, themselves and pushing themselves out there. So no, we don't have that. As to Keith Norman, uh, I've, been, I've been hearing the same thing about uh, he's trying to test the waters here, especially if the court cases go against uh, Floyd Bonner and, and uh, Van Turner. Mm -hmm. he, he likely will drop in, but there are other reasons why he probably wouldn't. His day job. Uh, pays him a lot of money, uh, and he would have to give that up to get um, a little bit more modest salary uh, uh, being mayor, now, but maybe that's okay. Uh, maybe he wants to be mayor. I've had conversations with him in the past about that. So uh, I just think that um, it is a free-for-all right now, mm -hmm. and, and we'll just have to see how this shakes out as we go forward. I guarantee you, Richard and Pepper, There'll be something different about this race next week when we get ready to do this show. <laughs> when I plan the show, I kind of leave a block. And, and the mayor's race, something will happen. Something will happen. Uh, all right, we're going to leave it there. When we come back, we're going to talk about two about faces that have gotten some uh, interesting attention this week. One, regarding uh, who wants to be superintendent of the largest school district in the state, and also an about face by a former state senator who says he's not guilty after all.